People still don't understand the disaster that the Federal Reserve has created with this policy. So everybody's gonna get wiped out through de deflation when this whole thing collapses at a crisis, or they're gonna get wiped out through inflation. Inflation is the stealth tax by which the government pays for everything. They still haven't really figured it out. They still haven't figured out the rock and the hard place that the Fed and the country are between because the Fed is gonna have to pivot, but inflation is gonna run out of control. See, they've got to make a choice. Do they want inflation or do they want economic implosion? Now, ultimately, if they choose inflation, we're going to have an implosion anyway because we're going to have hyperinflation. It just may happen a year later. And, well, that's good enough for the politicians. All they care about is that it doesn't happen now because to fight inflation, and there's only one way they're going to fight inflation successfully, which is why they can't do it. They've got to raise interest rates above the rate of inflation and inflation is what, 8%? Even if it's 6%, they got to get short-term interest rates up to 7%. They're, they're barely at 4%. They got a long way to go. And they've got to have massive cuts to government spending. They're not even considering that because right now, the way the government pays for spending is with inflation. Inflation is the stealth tax by which the government pays for everything. In fact, going all the way back to the TARP bailouts, Obamacare, the PPP. How did we get all this government? We didn't get it for free. We paid for it with inflation. They created money to pay for all this stuff. Now, if the government wants to get rid of inflation, they have to get rid of that money. And so they have to run budget surpluses. The Federal Reserve has to be able to withdraw all the liquidity that it's supplied. So we have to have big cuts to government spending. Right now, the government's got to cut Social Security, Medicare, Obamacare, national defense. We have to shrink the amount of money the government is spending. The government has to spend less money next year than it spent last year. In real real terms, actual cuts, not reductions in the rate of entry increases, but actual cuts. That's not happening. So the government's got to choose. Do we want to have a financial crisis and cut government spending and allow bankruptcies and defaults and all these losses? Or do we want to have inflation? And that's what they're going to pick. Sure. If they thought they can get rid of inflation without a problem, yes. The public doesn't like inflation, so the politicians wanted to talk tough about inflation. But what they're going to like even less than inflation is when they lose everything they've got, when they have a complete economic implosion, when their savings and investment accounts get wiped out and they lose their jobs. They're not going to like that. Now, of course, that's going to happen eventually anyway. There's no free lunch here. If the government chooses inflation, then inflation is going to wipe everybody out. So everybody's going to get wiped out through de deflation when this whole thing collapses at a crisis, or they're going to get wiped out through inflation. But the reason the Fed is going to pick inflation is because that happens later. And of course, as we've seen, they can come up with a scapegoat to blame inflation on somebody else. They never accept responsibility for the inflation they create. So if the Fed keeps hiking rates and everything implodes, well, hey, we did that to ourselves. So you bl blame the Fed, blame, blame the Fed. But if prices just run out of control, well, we could blame OPEC. After all, they just cut production for oil. We could blame Putin. Uh, we could blame greedy corporations. We could blame capitalism, speculators. I mean, maybe they'll even try to blame me. Who knows? But they're never going to accept any responsibility for what they did. But what I started talking about when we saw this Lehman type moment, and remember, you know, I'm familiar with these Lehman moments because I remember when I was short the subprime market, and the things that finally happened to get me to realize that, okay, I'm, we're about to get paid because I knew what to look out for because I was looking for these signs. The idea that nobody rings a bell, it's not true. They rang the bell. They Big Ben went off. Not pe People didn't hear it. People still don't understand the disaster that the Federal Reserve has created with this policy. You know, I was very much against QE from the beginning, and people are about to find out why. The Paul Krugmans of the world and all the people on mainstream investment firms who were blindsided by the 2008 financial crisis, who laughed at me on national television when I was warning about that crisis, these are the same people who are oblivious again because they think the Fed solved the problem they didn't understand. I understood the problem. That's why I knew the crisis was coming. And I also knew that the Fed made the problem they created worse. I just didn't know how long it would take before we experience the consequences. Well, now we're here.
right? We've, we've met the can that we kicked down the road and there's no place left to kick it. But people have no idea how bad this is going to be because we've had over a decade of unprecedented monetary madness and an unprecedented level of malinvestments, misallocation of resources. All these mistakes have been made that have to be corrected. And the fact that we didn't correct them a decade ago means they got much bigger, but it doesn't mean that we can, you know, avoid the day of reckoning forever. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now- I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.